beware of spoilers. I am Adam, attempting to maneuver my way out of a driveway. So, we are going to talk about She-Hulk, the newest episode of She-Hulk. Um, there is a sizable amount to talk about. I know a lot of people are getting shitty about the show because it is uh, only a half hour long each week. Um, it's meant to be like a workplace sitcom, so that doesn't exactly bother me. Um, and they're also doing eight episodes. Um, what does bother me a little is the fact that you have basically three hours of television. Let's, I'll be generous and say four hours of television, um, in this case, with, uh, the budget of a, of a major motion picture, um, and you're insistent on showing your main character in full CGI for the entire episode. And I'm watching it, and I'm like, this just seems kind of like a poor decision. Um, I get why. Like, narratively, I understand why. It's just semantically I don't understand why. I feel like the smarter decision for this show would have been to not have him be as, um, as She-Hulk. Um, have her be as, you know, as Jennifer Walters for the majority of it. Especially consider, like, and here's the thing too. It's like, it feels like they just want to get as much She-Hulk in the show as possible, not Jennifer Walters. But every other show so far hasn't leaned into it to that degree. Like, we got a lot more Sam Wilson and Bucky Barnes than we got Falcon and Winter Soldier and the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. We got far more, you know, Wanda than we got Scarlet Witch in WandaVision. Um, But, like, that kind of thing where we're going to sit here with this show and be like... um, she needs to be as She-Hulk the whole time, it's kind of actively hurting the show a little bit, because I think this episode is where I noticed it the most. The effects are just not great. And there's a lot of things that, like, oh, this looks like pre-res. It doesn't look like it's... Comp- like, it doesn't look like CGI that's done at times. And I'm like, oh, that's weird. Like, when she's walking through the office um, as She-Hulk, I'm like, there is no reason for this, especially considering, like, if they want her to be the face of things, and they want the She-Hulk to be the face of things, then having her, you know, do that, and then go to, what's it called, go to, uh, um, go to the the big hearing that she's dealing with as She-Hulk feels a little weird. Um, because then it's like, uh, or not as She-Hulk, as, as Jennifer Walters feels weird, because it's like, okay, well, the, the only thing people care about is the She-Hulk, that's what he said multiple times, um, and to have that be, like, okay, well, well, here's the story reason why we can't do that, and it's like, well, why? Like, why? Like, it's obvious that the, what's it called, the, uh, the, there's nothing in there that says that you know, she can't be She-Hulk while she's doing the, the case, but to, uh, to free, to free Blonsky, but why? Um, I, I don't know, I just feel like it's a, it's a weird decision. Um, Benedict Wong continues to be the MVP of, uh, of Phase 4, um, and really, you know, I would say part of Phase 3, too, I mean, he, he continues to be great comedic relief, Um, and, like, if you, if, if when you saw Doctor Strange, I don't think anyone was like, okay, and that, the librarian, Wong, he's gonna become, not only is he gonna become Sorcerer Supreme, and he's gonna have a, a a major role in the sequel to Doctor Strange, um, and, you know, probably Infinity War, and, and, you know, and, and Endgame, and all of that, but he's also going to be a, you know, a major player in, um, what's it called, in, in the Shang-Chi movie, and in She-Hulk, and, you know, it, it's just one of those things where it's like, and you're gonna like it the whole time, it's not gonna feel forced or weird, it's just you're gonna like that he's there, 
Um, and I gotta say, like, there's a little bit of patronization um, from from Jen when they're toward the beginning of the episode, they're trying to figure out how Abomination got out of jail. And there's a little bit of, pa- and it's like, all right, so it's this guy Wong, um, who's now the Sorcerer Supreme, and she she does one of her asides to the camera, and she goes. Alright, I know we're all excited to see Wong, but just be aware, this is not one of those shows where it's cameo of the week. Like, it, it just feels kind of patronizing, but it's so fun. It's like she's talking to a little kid, but it's really funny. Um, and uh, the the whole bit in the middle about the perception of She-Hulk is one of those things that there's going to be a little bit of complaining about, I feel like. Um, but that said, there's going to be... It, it, it's one of those things where like, you, you hear that... And you go, oh yeah, I heard this already four months ago, five months ago, from my coworker leading up to this show. Like, it it, it is, you know, it's just people who are like, hey, wait a minute, I said that, and now they're making fun of me, are going to be like, hey, wait, why are they making fun of me? And it's like, there's this lack of self-awareness. It's like when the boys, the most recent season of the boys ended, and there was an entire subset of the fan community who was like, hey, wait a minute, you're talking about me. And it's like, yeah, that's the point of the comic and the show. Like, you don't get that. Um, but it, it's just, it's always funny when that happens. And I think that that's going to, that, that is going to happen. Um, the B plot is great. Um, and, and her little aside, like, oh, cool. Tying up the A plot and the B plot. Awesome. Um, and, um, she, uh, her thing with, um, you know, her going and testifying to help the guy she used to work with is great, but my problem with that is we have a very superficial view of the character. Um, that testimony scene works a lot better if we saw more of Jen before she becomes She-Hulk and gets fired. Um, because, like, I think we met him, like, twice prior to this, and it's like, I don't know, he, um, he, I feel like the, the decision to make that be kind of the focal point of, you know, that part of the episode is like, that's a season two, season three kind of subplot, not a season one, episode three kind of subplot. Because we need to know the character a little bit better. Um, so we can get that moment of kind of catharsis of Jen releasing, you know, yes, this guy's an asshole, and yes, he is this stupid, like, you know, but that works as a way of, uh, what's it called, of, of making him... I think that would work better if we had seen him kind of fail his way to success multiple times. Um, but we don't see that or anything similar to that. So it's just kind of like, oh, okay, we'll take your word for it that he's just stupid. Like, he literally is a... It's. I'm not saying we have to give equal time to explain the character. I'm just saying develop that aspect of the character. Because I think the only thing he really did that was dicky was try to take the case from Jen. And then maybe he was kind of a dick when, when Jen got fired. But I don't think there's anything in that that is inherently like there was like that. That's my problem with that scene is that it's like, well, I would have liked to have seen us know this character a little bit better before we have this happen. Um, and then I don't know the post credit scene. I'm I'm not the target audience for. I don't think to find that funny. I've never like I don't know. I, I, it's one of the things like I'm watching. I'm like. How many people did this go through where they're like, this is a great idea? Um, and it's like, I, I mean, I didn't really find it funny, but also I'm not, you know, that's not my kind of thing. Um, what else was there? Um, but yeah, the whole light elf thing was hilarious, where she keeps shape-shifting and the people are trying to get out of the trouble. Um... And, uh, and him falling for it, thinking he's dating Megan Thee Stallion is also pretty funny. Um, I don't know. I, I feel like there was definitely room for... I mean, I think the show has everything there. 
And, like, what we're seeing is a show that's like, okay, we've seen these kind of shows before. We know what's happening. We've seen Night Court. We've seen, you know, tons and tons of, of procedurals. We know how to do the basic tenets of the show. Um, but at the same time, they're also trying to get the show released as quickly as possible. Um, and, and, and have it be like, we don't know if we're getting a season two, so let's not leave anything on the table. Um, and the Titania thing still hasn't really come back up. Um, and that's my other real issue, is that it's like, you, you, you do the first episode, and you have the Titania thing happen, and it's like, is the Titania thing only to, um, to give a reason why Jen Walters gets fired? Um, Maybe that's what the entire thing is meant to be. Like, oh, she gets fired because she's a liability, because she's the She-Hulk, and she's the one who comes and attacks and outs her. Um, but, like, I feel like you want to tie Titania into the plot more um, going forward, so that way it's not we get the end and that's it. Um, and then she gets attacked by the Wrecking Crew at the end of the episode, which is pretty cool. I mean, there's some cool, like, effect shots in there, but... I mean, what the fuck? Like, the the choreography is almost non-existent. You can't really see anything. I mean, there's that great moment where she's, like, she's terrified. And then she's like, oh, wait a minute. Like, there's that moment where she forgets. Like, she's got the four guys surrounding her, and one of them's got, got her, like, in a chokehold. And she's and she's got that moment of panic. And she's like, oh, wait a minute. And she re- remembers that she's She-Hulk, and she, you know, she handles it that way. Um, but... Like, the, the effects around their weapons are pretty cool, and there's some cool things like that, but, again, I'm kind of just, like, they're, they're not shooting it well, um, and her, mo- like, her, like, she doesn't move too much, and it's one of those things where, it's like, these guys are, like, trying to attack her, like, well, why? Like, I'm not talking motivation, I'm talking, like, you see her go she hulk you're like, well, what the fuck are you gonna do now? Like... Yeah, once you, once your your magical or, or alien weapons start deflecting off her skin, you're like, I'm like, I'm out. Fuck this. Bye. Like, I, I don't think necessarily you need to have, you know, that scene go on as long as it does, especially with how poorly choreographed and, and, and shot it is. Um, too many cuts in between scenes and you know, all of that, and I'm like, Arrow got a lot of shit for, for its, its action sequences, but there were some pretty good action sequences in Arrow, especially from season five on, and it's like, this is not, this did not look good, um, and, and I, I, and it's not the first time they've had an action sequence that didn't look good either, where it's like the sequence with, uh, her, um, fighting Bruce didn't look great, it looks, I mean, look, granted, the whole thing looks video gamey because it's two giant CGI characters fighting on what I assume is a giant CGI background. So, yes, it's a giant animated sequence that looks a little wonky. But I, I feel like the, you know, when you, when you get to, like, um, what's up, when you get to uh, something like this where it's like, oh, these are real people attacking a CGI character and all of that, like, Come on, but we, we've seen what you can do with this. We saw Infinity War, we saw Endgame. We know what these giant fights against CGI characters could look like. Or even small characters fights against CGI characters could look like. And it's just not working. Um, I don't know, I feel like there's a... Uh, what's it called? There's a, better, there's a better way to do that. Just in terms of, like, cinematography, like, in, in the most basic senses, there's a better way to do that, and, and it just fails there. Um, yeah, I, I'm just, like, I, I feel like the issue I have with the show is that it's a better courtroom drama, villain of the week courtroom drama show with She-Hulk than it is major player going forward for the Marvel Cinematic Universe that is meant to be something similar to Moon Knight or, um, what's it called, Moon Knight, or, uh, the other shows, like, uh, Falcon Woman Soldier, um, that's just my opinion watching this, I think, like, oh, that would be, you know, that would, that would be better, um, 
I mean, Tim Roth is great, uh, and and Benedict Wong. I mean, his, I think I talked about it before, but his his whole thing is hilarious. Where it's like he comes in, and he explains like, yes, I broke him out to prove that I could fight him and, and hold my own, and uh, then um, I put him back uh, after. It's it recontextualizes that scene in Shang Chi, and it's it's really interesting in that 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 whole sequence is you know with him trying to explain that, and then them trying to track him down is great too. Where it's like they're trying to get him to look up his LinkedIn, and it's like why the fuck does Wong have a LinkedIn, and why does he have listed on his LinkedIn that he's the Sorcerer Supreme in New York? It's it's so like. Like, it's just a level of just ridiculousness that is just very well suited to the show. Um, and then him showing up and testifying that he was the one who released uh, Abomination and why he released Abomination and all of that. And then they're like, all right, well, we'll let him go on parole, contingent on the fact that he wears a dampener. And then it's like, all right, cool. But now, Wong, you realize that you just confessed to uh, releasing a to releasing a prisoner from, from custody... Uh, to facilitate a prisoner escape, uh, and that's a crime. And he's like, I have to go, and he goes leaves. And it's it's it is a very like everything about that's funny. And as long as they keep doing things like that, this show will be a success. My problem is when the show starts getting into the what the show is actually about. Um, it is it, it's a little confusing to me. Um, and that's where I kind of fall off to an extent. Um, it, it is, it, 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 like, like that's where I lose interest, where it's like, the overarching story is the most, is the least interesting part of the show. The, the villain of the week hijinks, um, of the various bad guys, that's where the show is interesting for me. Um, so, uh, so yeah, so I think that just about covers it for She-Hulk. Um, we will wrap up there for today. Um, later today we'll have a discussion of the cancellation of DC Fandom over on 30 Minute Reviews. Um, as well as tonight a review of Hunt for Jesus Save Your Soul, the latest movie from, uh, what's it called? The latest, uh, or the latest Sundance release in a major theatrical, uh, release. Um, so, 